now at Huna. We just took a tuk tuk here from Muriketia. It took about an hour and a half, I would say so. And we just arrived in our place here, Flamingo Homestay. And it's super cute, we're super excited. Let me show you around. So we have a little balcony here, which as you can see already looks quite at the sea. Some palm trees in front of us with coconuts, I love it. Then here we have also a mango tree. Cute. And then this is a super lively street. We drove just uh, we drove just through it, and there's much going on, like a lot of shops, uh, a lot of places to eat and drink. So we can't wait to uh, check it all out how it looks like. But let me first show you our room. So we have this small little balcony, really cute. The windows also pretty with colored glass. Let me take you in. Moritz is on the inside. So this is our room, here you have Moritz. The bath is magnificent. It's, yeah, whoa, that's the door though. So fully f equipped for mosquitoes. And then they made the towel so cute. <laughs> really beautiful bed, some extra seatings, uh, side tables, even a little refrigerator table. And there's the bathroom, super nice. <laughs> Weird creatures, huh? After enjoying the beautiful sunrise at the beach and having breakfast, we were ready for our day trip to the city of Gaul. Here we are exploring the Gaul Fort, which was built by the Portuguese in the 16th century and later further fortified under Dutch rule. The fort is recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is the largest intact fort in Asia, built by Europeans. This place really sets you back in time with its former colonial houses, narrow streets and old churches and temples. Every corner offers a little adventure and a different angle on the colorful restored houses in typical colonial architecture. We do recommend coming early in the morning before crowds of tourists flood the city and the sun becomes redder unbearable. The bastions along the wall offer an amazing view of the ocean and the fortifications. You can 
walk along the ramparts at the walls and check out several of the bastions along the way. Towards the southeast stands the famous White Lighthouse, a beautiful and historical landmark surrounded by coconut trees. It's the perfect location for some pictures with a beautiful view of the ocean. Also many swimmers find their way here to the nearby beach. If the sun is burning too hot, you can always hide in one of the cute cafes or restaurants for a freshly squeezed fruit juice, just like we did. Or maybe check out the many handicraft stores and souvenir shops scattered within the fort. Exploring this historical fort was a pleasant change to the typical beach time and we thoroughly enjoyed our day here. The next day we were looking to explore the other side of Unawatuna more thoroughly and went on a walk along the beach towards the Frog Rock. The area towards De La Vela Beach was quite empty and serene and we took our time here enjoying the views, taking pictures and just chilling in the sun. As we walked further, we passed the frog-shaped rock on the beach, which is a cool spot and you can try to climb it if you dare. This unique landmark is a bit tough to climb though, so only do it if you're sure about your safety and skill. Right at De La Vela Beach, you will find many charming places for a drink or a little snack while enjoying the blue waves hitting the sand. We were getting some juices and sandwiches at Ratna restaurant where you can sit in comfy beach chairs and a chill ambience. We had no idea about the turtles in the water here so we were super surprised when we saw them in the waves. It's just amazing to watch the turtles while having lunch or a refreshing drink. actually on our way to the jungle beach right now which is quite hidden and we had no idea it would be like this let's call it jungly that this overgrown because on Google Maps the road looked just as big as the main road where we're coming from but right now it's all like rocks rumble and it seems to get thicker and thicker the green around us which is super surprising. 
to be honest, we didn't expect that kind of adventure no. in a touristy place like Unavatuna. So we were not prepared. But thank God we had like bug repellent or like mosquito repellent with us because it's warming here with uh, mosquitoes in this area. Yeah, it was a really nice walk to here actually because it's a little bit jungly. We saw like a new kind of monkeys. They were super, oh, yeah. super cute. All kinds of tropical flowers we haven't seen before. So we enjoyed yeah. ourselves along the way. And so now it's along the way to Jungle Beach and the Japanese pagoda, right? Yes. And a monkey was quite special. It had uh, like a gray beard. It looked almost like. And indeed, we haven't seen that one yet. We have seen the smaller ones that you see everywhere. We've seen the ones uh, up north in Anuratura. Yeah, the typical temple monkey, the gray ones with the long tail. Long tail, which are my favorite. But these were quite cool, actually. Right now we're on the way to the Japanese uh, Stupa or what was it? The temple yeah. it's called. We already hear um, the drums. Yes. So I don't know what's happening there. And, we'll see. And on the way it was like quite a, quite a jungly way, like mm -hmm. a road if you want to call it. Um, on the way you can also go to the left and you get to the jungle beach then. Yeah. So we've just been to the Japanese Stupa yeah. um, right down behind us and it was super beautiful. Um, really serene, like yeah, really it was peaceful feeling, less, not too many people. Less, less touristy, um, less people in general maybe also yeah. because of the time, it's like almost mm -hmm. six now I think. Um, but in general like super beautiful and really, really clean and just very meditative. Yeah. There was a monk uh, who was like drumming and then later also doing some prayers. Indeed. So it gave like something of a mood, especially with the sunset mm. that we saw there. So yeah. I have to say it's like a, I don't know if it's like a hidden gem or not, but we didn't know about it up front and we just checked it on Google mm. map maps and went through the little jungle that, that you saw. Yeah, and we can really recommend. There was yeah. such a, still a nice activity now at the end of the day to close off our stay Indeed. in Unawatuna. Because we do like to do things like not just stay at the beach, we want to see things, we want to like go a little bit about like hike, explore yeah. or see something in the city or like a temple or something like that. So this was like a, a hit. So yeah, really very much so. Indeed. It's, it's very, very good. <laughs> it's super sweet for it. Can I? Is it already gone? Yes. <laughs> Instead of going to the jungle beach, the sun is already going down. So maybe we've missed the nice part, but still beautiful.
This little hike to the viewpoint was a perfect ending to our day and also concludes our time in Sri Lanka, since tomorrow we will leave this country behind. We had an absolutely amazing time in Sri Lanka, a country we didn't know much about before coming. Throughout our three weeks journey, we encountered so many friendly people that really stole our hearts, explored stunning sights, learned more about the Sinhalese culture and the Buddhist religion. We ate delicious food, which we will recreate at home, and encountered many exotic animals and beautiful landscapes. We will always remember the wildlife in Wilpatu National Park, the sacred cities of Anurudhapura and Polonarua, our evening in Mihintali with the unforgettable sunset, the imposing Sigira rock in Pidurangla, Nuvara Elia and the lush green tea hills surrounding it, our train ride from Kandy to Ella, and the golden beaches in the south of the country. We truly hope to return to Sri Lanka one day to explore even more of this surprising, beautiful country. And we hope to have inspired you to travel there yourself. <laughs>